Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun invisible impossible card or floating impossible card and it's using acetate. Now, I got the idea from Trimcraft, so thank you guys. Again, you've done another awesome card and I'll share their links in my video description below and also on my blog. This is made from acetate and you know what? Personally, I think this is how they should all be made. This particular impossible card, it should be done with plastic. Because of the way the fold is done, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's classed as an impossible card because it's all done from one piece of card and you twist it. So once it's twisted, you wouldn't believe it's all connected. That's where impossible comes from. Um, but because I've made the, the card once, I love it and my tutorial is done extremely, extremely well and the cards I made, people love them. The people I gave them to really enjoyed them, but I know 10 years down the line, if you're like me and you keep those special cards, I'll pull that out the envelope and it just won't pop up anymore. It just won't. It's card and the fibres would have broken down. It's just not going to have the longevity, I should say. Whereas this being on plastic, this is going to last and pop up forever and ever and ever. And it is genius. I absolutely love it. So I've done this using a six size. Um, and I've used the Trimcraft Hales Couple Ditch Beach Life Papers and I've used the decoupage little scene here on the front and this one just says just for you and then on the back it's got happy birthday and you can write your little message. I've made a matching envelope as well which I'll talk you through but that will go flat in that envelope like so. It can be in there for weeks on end and then I, as soon as I take it out it just pops up and it flaps around and it's just, it just doesn't get damaged. You still have to be careful with the weight. You don't want to put too much on the front or too much on the back, for example. But yeah, I think now whenever I'm going to make an impossible card, it's going to be using acetate. Plus it does give you that fun look of it floating or looking like it's, you know, it's an invisible piece. When that's, you know, the photo's taken, that white piece doesn't look like it's attached and you kind of wonder how it's just sat there. So from a distance, when that's on the mantle, people will probably come up and look a bit closer to see how it's all done. So yeah, absolutely love this and let's crack on and make it. So I've got lots and lots of bits here. I'm going to give you lots of tips and show you lots of stuff. So I've got my envelope punch board to do the envelope later on. I'm going to probably use the Beach Life uh, little puffy stickers here, which is the bunting. And I've cut two, sorry, I haven't cut, I've popped out two other little scenes here from the Beach Life decoupage sex. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. So I've just got to, just got everything kind of ready to go. That's all the bits to show you. My acetate that I'm using is Crafter's Companion. That's all it says on here. <laughs> So I will find more information and I'll pop that all in my blog for you. But you want a strong, you want a thicker acetate because some of the acetates you can get are very, very thin. Try and get something that's a bit thicker. It's just going to help overall. That is the decoupage pack. It's brilliant. They are so lovely. The critters, they're just the illustrations. She is an amazing artist and I just have really enjoyed using these. So that's that one. And then that's going to be my envelope for the next one. So I'll just pop it in there. And this is the paper pack that I've used. So Beach Life again, you can see all of them. I've used this in quite a few tutorials now. Again, really, really, really like it. So, first of all, I have done my template. Because we're using acetate, it's gonna to be too hard for you to see what I'm doing on the acetate, so I've done this template for you. So you need to cut a piece of card that is six and a quarter by four and a half. Okay, so that will give us our A6 size card. Then what you want to do, I'll bring my pencil and everything in here. And I will link my other impossible card up here because that is a 5x7, so it's a bit bigger. But again, the base just change to acetate and then you've got the same card. All right. All the mats and layers will be the same, so you don't need to change anything. This is just the base. The base of the card, the main bit, is using acetate. So this is the six and a quarter inch length here. You want to mark at halfway, so at three and one eighth of an inch, just put a pencil mark there. Then along the bottom, you want to, so that's six and a quarter. So you, this time I'm coming in at one and a half from each side. So one and a half, put a pencil mark, and then come in at one and a half at the bottom there, put a pencil mark. Then along the side bit here, you want to mark halfway. So it's four and a half, so at two and a quarter, put a pencil mark. And then do it at that end as well. If you don't have one of these Tim Holtz rulers or a T square ruler, then just mark again at two and a quarter at that end. 
Now what you're going to do is join those two pencil marks together. So the two and a quarter, you're going to do a line right the way through. Remember, this is your template you're making, okay? And then go back along here where the one and a half and the one and a half inch little markers are and just do a pencil mark from those up to that middle two and a quarter inch score line, um, pencil mark, sorry. And then the middle one here, that three and a quarter little pencil mark that you've done, you just again want to do a pencil mark into the middle. So that is now what you should have. So it's your A6, four and a half by six and a quarter, coming in here to the middle, which is three and one eighth of an inch. Then on the other long side, you're coming in at one and a half inches from both end. And then you're just joining those pencil marks into that middle two and a quarter inch one. Okay, so that's what you should have, and that will be on my blog. Then what you want to do is grab your acetate. So this is now what you will have as your, your main base, which is the six and a quarter by four and a half. Okay, pop the acetate on top of the card, and what I found works best is grab some washi tape and just pop it on both ends, making sure it's completely lined up over that card. So just spend a bit of time getting it nice and lined up because if this is off then it will it won't make your, your card won't work properly. And then put some more washi tape. Don't put it over the way you're going to be cutting your pencil. Um, you're going to be cutting down these pencil marks so I'm just going to, I'm probably going overboard with the washi tape but I would rather it come out perfect and this will all get peeled off anyway. Okay, so just don't put washi tape over these pencil lines here. It doesn't matter about the side ones because you're not cutting down there. So now we've got that all ready, grab some scissors and you're going to cut up this two, um, this one and a half inch pencil line. Okay, and again, cut up that one. Okay, and then flip it round and then cut down that three and one eighth of an inch, like so. Okay, now next you want to do is score. Now I've seen so many people and loads of people have done the impossible card, um, and most people score right the way through and on the one that I done I didn't because it does weaken this side part plus it does an unnecessary score line that you do not need so all you need to do and as I showed in my other tutorial where you've got these two pencil lines here so where you've come in at one and a half on each side you're just going to score from each one so from this one to that one right through the middle there and that's just going to help us be able to fold that plastic neatly you just want a nice fold. Don't score right the way through. People have said do it for ease and for quickness. Yeah, okay, I get it, but really this is just as quick and just as easy. So, and it just, basically now we have a nice area here on our left and right hand side with no score line through, because we're going to be sticking our paper over that so it looks nice. Okay, so now we can remove all of the washi tape. Okay, and this is what you will now have. So you will have a cut piece exactly like this. Now keep that, because that's a great template and you can keep cutting. I used that for the first one, so it just, yeah, just handy to have. Add it with all my other ones. So now what I'm gonna do actually is I'll show you on this one. So what you're gonna do, so you've got your two, in the, for the instance, for the sake of this video, I've got my two one and a half inch sides facing away from me. So imagine this is the acetate that I'm holding. What you want to do is just bring this one towards you, okay? Keep the left hand side where it is, don't move it, but this one here, this one and a half inch, I now want to face towards me. Just twist it round, like so. Okay, so I'm going to grab my piece of acetate, these are my two little one and a half inch sides, and I'm just going to bring that one round towards me. Then what you want to do is where the score line was, is just fold that into place. So you just want to kind of embed that score line that we made. So you need to fold it one way and then you need to fold it back the other way. Okay, like so. So I'll just show you what I've done. So this is the, imagine this is the acetate, I've brought that round and then all I've done is folded this this way and burnished there and then folded it back that way and burnished it there. 
so then that pops up. Okay, I'm going to pop that back so that's my template. And now you should have this piece of acetate, I put it there, with this piece in the middle just popping up. And that's the impossible the way, because if you look now, people looking at that be like, how the hell have you done that? That's one piece of card, and even my husband was amazed by it. So it is, it's very, very clever. So that is our base, okay? So you will have this piece flapping at the top, just like that. That's how yours, your acetate should look right now, okay? So hopefully this is all making sense. Now we need to do all of our little mats and layers to go on top. Now there are lots of different ways to do this. Um, some people just put a big piece of paper card all on the bottom, which you can do. So once you've, you've got this and you, you know play around, there's, there's loads of ways to decorate it. What I've got here is again two templates for my, um, for my mats for these pieces here. So we're going to be doing these kind of L shapes and we're going to have the base mat and then the, the decoration, the top layer there. So best way to do this is you need to cut your pattern paper to two and seven eighths of an inch by four and a quarter. Okay. Now I'm showing you this template just so then it makes it easy for me to explain how I've done my pencil marks to, what, to show you where to cut. So along your long four and a quarter inch side here you want to come up two inches and just mark a little pencil mark. Then along this short side at the top here you want to come in by one and a quarter and mark a little pencil mark. From that one there you then want to come into your card I just get this right, sorry no I've done it from the two inch, sorry, so come in from the two inch marker into your card and put a little pencil mark at one and five eighths of an inch, okay? You then want to join the one and a quarter pencil mark here up to that one and five eighths and then join that two to the one and five eighths here. So you will have this, this is your back to front L shape here. Okay, so if you want to do it as a template, then what I've done is popped it over my paper and then just done a pencil mark and then again just along that side and just do a pencil mark there and then I've just come in by that one and five eighths of an inch. Okay, so now I'm just going to do my pencil marks and join that up. Okay. So I've just done the template just to explain to you, just so you can see it visually, but that's what you then want to do on your pattern paper. I've just got some sticky, get rid of that. Okay, so then cut that one out. So just do the one first. So this is the one with the back to front L that I've just showed you. So I'm just going to cut that out and like so. Okay, so now what you need to do is just pop that over the top of your other piece, because you will have two pieces of this size and you're then just going to cut it out again. So you're going to have two back to front L shape pieces of pattern paper, like so. So one is going to face this way and then all you've got to do is twist that one round and it will face that way. And again, if I use my template, so that's the one that we brought forward, that's how it will look. So just bring in the template so that's how it will look. Now actually what I've done is I've cut them, look you can see they're not going to go. So all you need to do is pop it back into the, the way it was and bring this side in front of you instead. Okay, like so. Alright, so originally we brought this one towards us. Pop it back, bring that one instead. So if any of you have done that in the past, I know lots of I've read comments and people said they got their mats and layers the wrong way around. All you've got to do is just flip the base. So there you go. So now that one is going to sit and that one's going to sit in there and you can see you get that nice even border. So now we need to do the same with the layers that are going on top. So I've got this really fun ice cream and lollipop paper from that same pack. So again, I've done another back to front L, okay, and this piece is on a five and five eighths, I'm sorry, two and five eighths of an inch by four. And this time you want to come up the long side here at one and three quarters of an inch and put a little pencil mark. Come in from the top here at one inch and put a pencil mark. And then from this one and three quarters you're going to come into the card 
at one and five eighths of an inch. Okay, so again, I'm just going to mark my cardstock because I didn't do this one. Okay, so I've just done my little point there, and then I'm just going to join up those pencil marks. This has got uh, glitter on it, this paper, so it's a bit harder to draw over, but it's fine. So again, just I'm going to remove the pencil marks slightly on this one so I just don't have to worry about rubbing out over the top of this fancy paper. Just, just really neatly, like so. And again, just sit it directly on top of your other piece and just cut around it. Okay, so again, I'm going to bring in this template, which imagine is the acetate, it's just you can't see it in the video. And then that one will go on top and that one will go like so okay so now you want to stick them down so I'm bringing in my piece of acetate which is still in that form with the it's still facing that way okay you can see it there I just so hard with the acetate to show you but that's how it is but remember what I said just put it back into the flat form and bring this side over instead okay so I just put mine back into its flat form and bring that one round and just you just rework the um, score lines, that's all, so it's, it's not a, an issue. But I know a lot of people have said that it, the mats and layers, they've just completely like confused themselves with. But all you've got to do is just flip it around the other way, that's all. So I'm going to go ahead and get those all stuck down now on my acetate. Okay, so it's all stuck down now and you can actually start to see the shape of it much, much better there. Okay, so now you need your pieces for the actual flap I guess the main front part of your card so you want a piece of white or whatever card you're using but this white card in my case is three and a half by two and a half and then you'll need two pieces of pattern paper which are three and a quarter by two and a quarter so you just want to stick one of your pattern pieces down first on top and then we're going to stick that one on now it will overlap if I bring it up here can you see the acetate is inside the white square which is great but you want to bring it up about a quarter of an inch from the bottom to create that look that it's floating so you can see there I've got a gap if I push it right down like so you're not really going to get that that look but if you bring it up like that you can see now so about a quarter of an inch and then you should have about a one eighth of an inch overhang of this white card from your acetate square so what I would say is stick your double-sided tape just on the back but you don't want to you want to give it a frame you want to leave a white frame sorry because you're going to be sticking this other piece so if you can see where I've just stuck my double sided tape I haven't gone right to the edge here I haven't gone right to the top and I haven't gone right to the edge there I've gone closer to the bottom because that's going to be sticking on the acetate but basically what's then going to happen so it's going to be like that roughly this is then going to go over the top and obviously you don't want to see any of that double sided tape okay so that's going to cover the other side so I'm going to get this stuck down first and then hopefully you'll be able to see it a bit better okay so I've just stuck it down on the back there so I've come up about a quarter of an inch from the bottom and then you can see where that double sided tape is it's not overhanging you don't want it to come over the acetate because now this piece is going to stick over like so okay and it will be it will perfectly sit over that acetate and you won't see the acetate poking out the sides so with this piece you can just pop your double-sided tape over the whole back piece it doesn't matter because you want the whole thing to stick down okay so I'm just carefully I've taken my backing off my tape and just lining it up with the acetate on the left and the right here and just making sure you've got that nice one eighth of an inch border all the way around so that's my back that's my front and look you can see it just it it just doesn't go anywhere it's brilliant it's just yeah I absolutely love it then I've got this piece here so this is three by two I've already stamped happy birthday I've already put some of my double-sided tape on the back and this is going to stick onto the back panel so again make sure it is the right way yeah uh, yeah the lollipops there although that looks good like that I guess this doesn't really matter but I really like that piece there so I think I'm going to change it so I'm going to have this now this is going to be my back so I'm just going to pop that like so 
So that's now my front. And then I can decide, so I've got this little piece here just to join across there, which I really like. And this is from that decoupage set. So I'm going to pop that one. So just to say, and then on the back it says happy birthday. See, this, these work great for thank you cards as well. But I'm just going to pop that along there. Um, you could have one long strip. Again, check out my other one because that's a different design altogether. But this is two and five eighths of an inch by about half an inch. Okay, so that's just going there. And now I can decide whether I want to have those guys there or him. Oh no, I think it's got to be him. He looks so good there. And he's got the ice cream and he's got his drink and he's just chilling out. So I'm going to stick him down. Okay, so that's stuck. And then I did want to just pop a little bit of this bunting. I don't know if I'm going to be able to squeeze it in. No, they're not going to work. So I'm going to add some Nuvo drops and probably some sequins or something just to finish that off. So now that's, so that's the card. That's it. Done. So there's the back. That will fold and go into a card. So now to make the card, so the envelope, sorry. So I've got, again, a paper pack and I'm going to use that nice green. And this one is, so when it folds down, it will come over. So this is your, what let's, did I say that was? That's four and a half. It actually comes over by another four, by, by another half an inch almost. So it makes that five and a half. So it becomes a five and a half by six and a half. So you want to be using the, sorry, five by six and a half. So you're using the six bar. So on your envelope punch board here, um, it's telling you you need a piece of paper that's nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. So I'm just going to cut this piece down. So the six bar is a five by six and a half. So your first score line is at four inches. So I'm just going to grab this piece here, line up my card at the four inch marker, and just score. Don't worry if it doesn't, or it just does it on this one. Then I like to rotate my whole piece round. So flip it round, and again, do that same at four inches. And then all you've got to do is use your score guide and just line up your score line that you've made with this piece here. Punch, and then score, and it will perfectly meet up there and then rotate that whole piece around. Since doing it this way, I find I always get perfect envelopes. So there we go. Get rid of all of that. And then just burnish all of your score lines inwards. Okay, I like to corner punch all of my points there. That that is optional. And there is one on the envelope punch board, but I find it's too it's quite a small one, I like it more deeper. So just decide, it doesn't really matter with this one. Fold in your sides, oh gosh, just pulled my whole board there. Um, and then just run some tape along the two inside the smaller pieces. Okay, and then just bring that one over like so. And there's your envelope. How lovely does that look? So just to show you, fold it all down flat and pop him in like so. And you can see now when it's folded over, it just meets the top of your envelope. And that is all perfect now. And again, so you can be in there for a couple of weeks or however long, you bring it out and it just naturally pops up because it's plastic. It is just, again, I love it. Absolutely love it. So for me, this is how I'm gonna be making my impossible cards now. Um, I love, love 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 with card and i think they are still brilliant but if you want it to last a lot longer um then definitely i would say use the acetate so this is my um version of the floating or invisible impossible card hope you've enjoyed it bring in the other one there as well these are really fun i think it helps with this paper as well i just think they look brilliant so if you've enjoyed today's tutorial please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more thanks for watching bye